Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Precision Machine Shed. Today what I have going on is I'm going to make a little spider here. This is an example of the one off my heavy tin for my 13 inch lathe here. Um, my heavy tin is out getting its bed scraped, or not the bed scraped, but the uh, taper attachment scraped into the bed. So it's all lined up because I never did that when I originally did it. So. I'm down a lathe and now I got my Heavy 13 and it kind of gives me a, a reason to, to do some improvements on this guy because uh, I've been using it lately and I really am liking this thing. So the one thing I got to do is I need to make a spider for it. So I'm out in my garage here today. I got horrible lighting so hopefully this video works out for you guys. Um, I'll try to do the best I can. So let's get started. Alrighty, so here's the outboard spindle on my <clears throat> 13 inch lathe, and this one is a little bit different than my um, my Heavy 10. So th on this Heavy 10 one, I just made it a very tight slip fit inside uh, the spindle here, and this thing has worked out amazingly, and it's worked out really well without uh, actually clamping it to the spindle, and I've had zero problems with this thing. So I was going to do something similar here, however, <clears throat> I can't you know this one will fit in there because this outside spindle is actually the spindle whereas on my heavy 10 in order to and you can see here there's a, a woodruff key set there for um, a woodruff key for the for the uh, um, a quick change collet attachment and on the third my heavy 10 downstairs this there's actually a collar here and this collar is part of this outboard gear so this gear and my collar actually fit over this and so hence why this is exactly the same size as that because um, that fits in there so anyways <clears throat> so it gives us a little change of things that we can do so what I'm gonna do on this one is I'm gonna actually machine it to fit on the outside I might I might put some uh, brass tip screws to clamp onto this or I might, uh, we'll see how tight it gets, I and mean, I might put a woodruff key in there. I'm not sure yet if I want to put a key slot in there or not. Uh, I guess it would be a good idea, but see how motivated I get. And I measured this earlier, this is 1.750 inches, pretty much exactly. So I'm going to cut it a tad bit under, and actually I'm going to cut it right dead nuts at 1750, and uh, hope, for, hope for being on. I lied. So we're going to cut it 1748, 1749, and we're going to test fit it. And if it doesn't fit, we'll stick it back in the lathe, turn it down a little bit, and we'll keep test fitting it so it's a super tight fit on there. Um, that's what I did with my Heavy 10, and it's worked great. So let's get rolling. I've kind of started here, and first off, I'm going to say I'm wearing gloves, and I've been doing this long enough to know I should, shouldn't be wearing gloves when I'm running a lathe. And I don't get my hands anywhere near this anything that's running uh, when I'm wearing these gloves. So don't bitch at me for wearing gloves. I know the risks. Uh, yiddy yad or whatever. Anyways, we have this guy set up. Uh, I just pre-bored a quarter inch hole here. And I got a few larger bits we're going to go in there. And I'm going to take this guy out to, I think my largest bit is a one and a quarter, one and five sixty-fourths, actually one and a quarter. So I'm going to go out to one and a quarter, then I got my boring bar, we're going to bore it out a little bit. Uh, and then we're going to do the outside here. Uh, and I think this is a two and a half inch, possibly a two inch, two and an eighth inch piece of aluminum. I think it's 70, 71. Doesn't matter. Uh, it's not, uh, this isn't, for these spiders, you're not holding a whole hell of a lot, so it doesn't really matter. I mean, you could use steel, but, um, it's just holding something in place, and it's usually fairly centered up, so there's not a whole lot of, uh, pressure being put on these spiders. <clears throat> Alright, so I'm gonna bore a few more larger holes in here and, uh, get rolling. I got some slippage going on here. So what that is, is I have a, 
an old leather belt and it's very wore out and it slips on my bottom drive pulley so I needed to get a new belt for this thing. It's got a two horse three phase motor that's running off of VFD which it runs just fine but it uh, that I mean the, the drive pulley just cruises and then uh, this thing bogs down because I slip off my old crappy leather belt. So what I'm going to do next I think is go down and whack this guy off because I don't have a parting tool uh, for my BXA Alors tool post here. So I'm just going to take it down on my chops on, chop it off, the old killer. Seventy thousand. So seven fifty right there. Eight ninety. What did I say? Eight ninety. Perfect. Spot on. All right. So I am within nine one thousandths, and I crep or I tucked my boring bar way up into my holder so I could cut down on the vibration. Hopefully I can get uh, the last cut here without much problem. So I'm right at 1741. Alright, so major fail here. I actually uh, it's the first time I've used this 13 inch lathe for an actual project and I'm uh, a little skeptical here. It was a few thousands off so for what I thought it'd be. So anyways I ended up about not quite a thousandths over my diameter right here which sucks because uh, uh, I really wanted that to be a nice slip fit on there. So you can, I don't know if you can see there, but there's just the tiniest ever bit of slop, and it's maybe, you know, half a thousand, just enough to make it not. fit properly. Alrighty, so it's been a few days since I messed with this thing, and I... Like you saw in the last video clip there, I kind of screwed the pooch and cut a little over. So what I'm going to attempt to do is, being that I have, uh, I think I'm about a half inch longer than I really need to be, so I'm going to try and cut eh, 400, 500 thousands back into where I haven't bored in yet. And I'm going to chop the front off here and uh, hopefully we got enough room left to go. Uh, it's kind of unfortunate. Uh, it was all my fault. I reset my tool post and didn't double check everything. So sometimes you gotta bend over, take a deep breath, and take it all in. So uh, that's where I'm at right now. I'm just trying to fix my F up without uh, completely redoing this thing. Alright, so here I finally got my piece all finished up. And it's a nice tight slip fit down there. You can see. Since it's on there, it doesn't move at all. And turn it on. Runs pretty true. I had to switch out chucks because my old 3-jaw chuck wasn't uh, not indicating very well. So 
Anyways, we got that. Now we gotta drill some holes in here and tap this guy. All right, finally I got this guy set up in my Bison Super Indexer. If you don't happen to have a $3,000 Super Indexer, you can use uh, either a rotary table or uh, in a pinch like I did with my Heavy 10. You can just stick it in a drill press and do a bunch of measuring and get it as close as you can and it usually works out all right. Um, or you can check out my one of my videos, Indexing on a Lathe, where I showed how I exactly indexed uh, my last one on my lathe within you know a thousandths of each other so it turned out pretty good but um, so I got this guy set up on my y-axis so I'm centered that way so now I gotta just center this way and I'm set up to do uh, my ring here that I'm gonna drill through is 570 thousandths so 280 so I'm gonna use my edge finder so it's gonna be 285 thousandths plus 100, so 385 thousandths is going to be my number to hit. Um, so we'll just find the edge and start drilling away here. There's our edge, so I'm just going to zero it off and double check it. Spot on. Crank it over 100 thousandths to make up for our edge finder then another one two and eighty five thousandths that'll get us right where we want to be all right so I got everything set up I locked my table down both X and Y axes now I'm, all I'm gonna do is spot drill these with a center drill <clears throat> and we'll go to town set up with a 9 30 seconds drill bit to do a 5 16 by 24 fine thread hole so same deal uh, we'll drill these out perfectly spaced holes. Alright, so I'm going to attempt to power tap these guys. Uh, never power tapped on this mill, so we'll see. Add a little lubrication, and we'll see how this goes here. Make sure I'm turning in the right direction. There we go. Tighten this baby up, try it again. And voila, just like that, we got a nicely tapped hole. All right, look at that. That worked out great. I guess one thing I should have done is I should have tapered these, so let's um, put a little chamfer on them. All right, a little bit of an afterthought. I was gonna chamfer the top of these, so this is just a big, I don't know, half inch uh, pollen mill. I thought you really need this, but it makes it look a lot nicer. Here we are. Alrighty, so there we go. <clears throat> All finished up, perfectly spaced. 
put some brass tipped screws in there. If you would like to know how I made those, check out this link right here. And let's throw this bad boy on. So as you can see, it doesn't move at all now. It's a slip fit. I could set, put some set screws back here, but in my opinion, once you get this barrel or whatever you're using clamped in there, this guy isn't going to go anywhere. All it's doing is holding it from flopping around this way and this way. So let's check it out. Pretty sweet. Pew. There we go. Spider for the 13 inch lathe. A few things I was going to mention before we end out. Um, you want to get these screws as close up to the spindle as you can. I just happened to add a half inch in here, so I threw it right in between, so it actually worked out. So I'm actually about a quarter inch, maybe three eighths of an inch out, my center point is, from the end of the spindle. Uh, with my chuck that I have in there now, I can fit a, it'd have to be a 26 inch barrel. Otherwise, if I make a, a spider for my uh, spindle side, I could do up uh, down to a 22 inch barrel. Like I said, you don't need any fancy tools. You can do this with a drill press and a lathe. Uh, it's just as easy. Uh, might not be perfectly precise, but it will get the job done. So I hope you guys found that helpful. If you like that, please be sure to like, comment below. Let me know what you're thinking. Share with all your buddies and subscribe if you haven't done so already. So till next time, Stay safe on your machines and shoot safe. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.